Today I'm doing a winter sewing reveal and a winter sewing container comparison. Thanks for watching my channel, Native Plants Near Lake Ontario. I'm gardening from Toronto, Ontario, and all of the reveal photos are from mid-May 2023. In today's video, let's compare seven types of winter sewing containers. Six inch pots inside Ziploc bags, small storage bins with nursery pots inside, spinach containers, wiper fluid or vinegar bottles, four liter water jugs, yogurt containers, and juice and pop bottles. I'll talk about these containers, starting with my least favorite containers and ending with my absolute favorite containers. Let's start by looking at how I used these Ziploc bags. I put six inch pots inside the baggies with my native seeds, of course, and I made sure there were holes for drainage and for snow and for rain to get in and for ventilation. Let's have a look at these sprouts of five different plants that are native to my area. The spotted bee balm did just fine. Uh, this is a plant that I already have and pollinators love it. The next one is gray headed coneflower. And this is the first time I've had this plant. I'll likely put it at the back of a garden bed since it should get pretty tall. The next one is Virginia mountain mint. And I'm just hoping that this plant can outcompete some invasive species which are in my garden bed. Let's look now at smooth blue aster. For me, this had an extremely high germination rate. And finally, here are the black eyed Susans. Like the smooth blue aster, the germination rate was super high. I think both of these species are really good for beginners. So to summarize my thoughts on using Ziploc baggies with six inch pots inside, I liked that they were easy to cut into, but I didn't like having to buy the supplies. Sometimes you don't need to buy any winter sewing supplies if you're reusing something that's already in your kitchen. And that may not be the case with Ziploc bags. I also didn't like the floppiness of the Ziplocs and how they touch the soil under the rain and snow. Now let's have a look at these plastic bins with nursery pots inside. The bins are only seven inches tall. I had put soil underneath the little pots, but I later emptied out that bottom layer of soil after having some algae issues. I didn't drill enough holes, so there was too much moisture inside and not enough air circulation. Out of five bins, only two have germinated for me at this point in mid-May in Toronto. So let me show you those two. Here we see Black Eyed Susans again, which had high germination as usual. And let me show you White Wood Aster as well. This is a new plant for me, and I'm excited to see its flowers in the fall. In the end, I did like these bins because they're reusable and I can stack them while they're in storage. What I didn't like though, is that they were too short and they didn't have the height for seedling growth. Also, my bins were prone to algae and they were also hard to drill holes into. So I will be reusing these bins next winter, but I won't be buying any more. Let's move on to spinach or salad containers. To make one winter sewing container, I would take two boxes of spinach and tape them together. This provides space for the seedlings to grow. Let's have a look at three species, which did particularly well. The large seeds of blanket flower practically all germinated. Blanket flower is not exactly native to my area, but it's native to warmer places, not too far from me. Next is yellow giant hyssop. A friend of mine has this plant in a shady spot in her garden, and it's doing really well in the shade, and it's well loved by pollinators too. I'm super excited to show you the sprouts of spotted joe pieweed. 
partly because I collected the seeds myself, but mostly because in my garden, Joe Pieweed is the plant that monarch butterflies love the most. I just love Joe Pieweed for this reason. To summarize my thoughts on using spinach or salad containers for winter sowing, I like that they're repurposed containers that are already in your kitchen. I like that they're stackable, that makes storage easy. I also like that they're easy to cut into, and I like that this item encourages healthy eating. On the other hand, I did find that the tops could buckle under the weight of the heavy snow, and it was also hard for me to look inside these containers since they were taped shut. So all things considered, I really like using spinach or salad containers for winter sowing. If mine are still in good condition after transplanting, I'm going to save these for next year. And throughout the year, I'm going to keep buying spinach and salad to collect more containers. Let's look now at wiper fluid bottles and vinegar bottles. In the bottle of windshield washer fluid, I planted purple coneflower seeds, and I think they all germinated. Purple coneflower is easy to grow, and butterflies love it, such as this question mark butterfly. Golden Alexander is also appreciated by butterflies and other bugs. I sowed Golden Alexander seeds in the vinegar bottle. I do see signs of life, but I think the sprouts need more time to get a bit bigger. So to summarize my thoughts on these containers, I like that they're repurposed containers that have been used for something else. And I like that they're easy to see inside. What I didn't really like is that the holes are not centered, but that wasn't really a big deal. All in all, I really like these containers and I hope to get access to even more of them for next year. Moving on, Let's have a look at these four liter water jugs. You'll see that I have healthy sprouts for blue stemmed goldenrod and for black eyed Susan. For mid May, I think they're both quite tall. The black eyed Susans were a bit shorter in my six inch pot that was inside the Ziploc bag. And they were much, much shorter in the small storage bin. So I'd say that the black eyed Susans seem the strongest in these four liter water jugs compared to the other containers. So to sum up some thoughts on these water jugs, I like that they are repurposed, that they allow you to see inside quite easily and that they won't easily blow over. What I don't like, however, is that they're not very available to me since I drink only tap water. My second favorite container for winter sewing is a 750 gram yogurt container. This is readily available to me since we eat a lot of yogurt. The lids of my yogurt are not transparent. I do cut up holes when I put my containers out in the dead of winter, but I recognize that there is a lack of light. So in late March, I created windows in these lids using either scrap plastic or clear packing tape. That took a bit of time and patience, but it worked. Here we have purple coneflower again and anise hyssop. Then we have bottle brush grass, which really took off. And we also have spotted Joe pie weed again. And finally, this is Missouri ironweed and blue vervain. All things considered, I just love using yogurt containers for starting seeds. They are repurposed and already in my kitchen. They are easily available to me. They can be reused and they are stackable when it's time to store them. What I didn't really like is that it does take some crafting to make those clear lids and yogurt containers can easily tip over in the wind. But those two negative points are pretty minor in my opinion. So of all of the winter sewing containers I used, I liked the two liter juice and pop bottles the most. They were the most hassle free and they were generally quite successful. Practically all the bottles had germination to some degree by mid May. And I think that's pretty normal for Toronto, Ontario. Here's a picture of 18 bottles, but I'll show you the sprouts of just six of them. 
Let's start with two penstemons. Foxglove beer tongue will eventually have white flowers, and hairy beer tongue will have purple flowers. Then we have prairie smoke, and this is one of the earliest sprouts that came up. It germinated in early April. Butterfly milkweed is next, and we probably all know that milkweed is of great importance to the monarch butterfly. Then we have gray goldenrod. What I like about this bottle is that I knocked it over at the end of December, but that didn't really affect germination. Lastly, this is obedient plant. I just cut out the tallest sprouts, thinking that they must be weeds, but hopefully what we see here are sprouts for the actual obedient plant. Let's talk now about why I really like using the two liter juice and pop bottles the most. Firstly, they are repurposed items already in my kitchen. They're tall enough to allow for seedling growth and for air circulation. They're somewhat easy to cut holes into. And finally, they're low maintenance. They don't dry out too easily or have too many algae issues. Now the two downsides about juice and pop bottles are that they can easily tip over in the wind and they're not stackable if you want to reuse the bottles for another year. But all in all, juice and pop bottles are my favorite containers for winter sewing. I think that they're the closest thing that we have to American milk jugs. So that's it for this video on the winter sewing containers that I used to start my native plants. If you'd like more information on the principles of winter sewing, please see the links in the description below. Resources include the Winter Sewers Facebook group where I got most of my information. And you'll also find a couple of other YouTube videos and other useful links.